Hey art nerds, so today I am prepping for one of my marker classes that I am teaching through the Nashville Plaza and I wanted to share something really cool with you guys today. This is how you can turn your digital line arts or line arts that you've purchased or downloaded as a patron from, I don't know, my Patreon, because that's one of my backer rewards is line arts for my backers, um, but how to turn them into printable line arts that you can marker or watercolor. So we are starting with Strathmore marker paper. This is 50 sheets. It's a fairly thin marker paper. The example all the way on the left, you can kind of see my earphones through that. So it's somewhat transparent. It's a little heavier than tracing paper. And you get 50 sheets in a pack and it's 9 by 12. So I'm going to be printing this on my small HP toner printer, which I'll show you guys in a moment. But it only accepts uh, 11 by 8.5 or smaller. So I have to use my paper trimmer to trim one down. Trim the sheets down, I should say. Now, the sheet all the way to the left has already been trimmed to 8.5 by 11 so that it'll run through my printer. So as I am prepping for my class, I want to print several sheets for my students to be able to color along without having to do any drawing if they're not comfortable comfortable doing so. So I'm going to need to trim these sheets down by hand. Once I've trimmed them down, we're going to head on over to Photoshop. So this is one of the coloring sheets I've put together for my students. If you're a backer and you're interested in a coloring sheet such as this, I'm happy to send them to you. But this is basically just my charm designs that I thought would be really cute as, you know, coloring practice for people who are just sort of learning markers. So I wanted to kind of include a variety of objects and I have other marker sheets that I'm going to be printing. This is just the first one. And um, this is size for eight and a half by 11, which is what my printer can take. So I'm going to just go to print and do normal print settings, nothing fancy and send it to my toner printer. So I need to trim my sheets down and then we'll go to the next step. So you can use lots of different papers with your alcohol markers. This is Strathmore's marker paper. I've never used it before, but I'm kind of excited to see how it handles. And it's a very thin marker paper. I do have marker paper reviews here on this channel. And if there's interest, I will review this paper as well. But since these are kind of thin and a little bit flimsy for marker paper, I would a, I would remount it, and B, I would work with a blotter sheet underneath because I feel like the marker is just going to soak through. This is probably great if you only want to do a few layers, but as you can see, now I have an 8.5 8 by 11 sheet of paper, so I'm going to do that for my other sheets, put them in my printer, and print them, but... I did want to mention that using a toner based printer, so like a copy machine kind of printer, toner is watercolor water resistant and I believe it's alcohol marker resistant. I'm going to do a test on these before I say goodbye to you guys. Actually, before I print all these, I should probably do a test even if that means we kind of ruin one. So I'll set this aside. Let's do a green like the green of a succulent. Good, awesome. I've done toner plus alcohol marker stuff in the past. In fact, when I was advertising my 31 days under the waves coloring sheet packs, I uh, colored one on camera and that was printed at home on high quality paper using one of my toner printers. My first toner printer, in fact. But as you can see, we're not getting any smearing. In fact, there, now you can see we're not getting any smearing, we're not getting any smudging, so this is going to be great for my students because they're going to be able to practice alcohol marker techniques without uh, having to do any drawing or having to do any inking. And real quick, you can see it goes straight to the back of the paper. So I'm going to cut down the rest of my pages and check in with you guys. So one of the big limiting factors for, you know, what you run through your printer, what kind of papers you use, is going to be what your paper is willing to take. My current toner printer, which I'll show you guys in a minute, I'm not trying to be like vague about it. I've reviewed it. I just don't remember its exact name. It's an HB printer 
and it takes cardstock okay so anything cardstock weight is okay and it seems like it's taking this okay so it might even take tracing paper but my previous toner printer which was Adele something else I don't even know wouldn't it would only basically take copier paper it wouldn't take cardstock and it wouldn't take tracing paper so I was pretty limited with what I could print and what I could do with my Dell printer so really what you can print what your printer will run what papers you can use for this technique that's going to vary on the printer that you have now I do know that Office Max, Office Depots, their large copy machines, they can take um, like cellulose-based watercolor paper. So 90 pound watercolor paper uh, with, you know, some tooth, not too much. It can take it, but they, most of the employees there don't know how to print on it. And uh, some will not be willing to try, you know, try and figure it out. I did find that if you set it to eggshell even if your paper is white it will pick up the paper a little bit better so that might be something if they're having trouble if their machines will not run the paper that might be something worth mentioning to them but to me when it comes to coloring sheets of any type it's all about the right paper and that's why I can be kind of weird about coloring books is if it doesn't have the right paper then I don't necessarily think it's worth the money because it's all about being able to achieve the techniques you want to achieve. So in today's kind of, I don't know, let's try it video, we're going to try printing several different marker papers or marker friendly papers. We're going to see which ones work in my printer. You also can bring in Bristol to places like Bristol paper, Bristol board to places like Office Max, Office Depot. It's about um, like cover paper 80 pound stock weight so they should be able to run it for you but it's going to really depend on your office supply store and how willing they are to do that okay i've got my paper cut loaded into my printer so i'm just going to go to print and select my printer here i'm going to do it one copy at a time because this is really thin paper and I'm a little afraid it's going to jam. And it's already been set to scale to the paper. So scale to fit media. And then I'm gonna hit print. So this is what I'm rocking. It's a Color LaserJet Pro M254DW. It takes toner carts and I've put 10 sheets of my hand cut Strathmore marker paper in. So we're going to see how the first one comes out. And I have reviewed this printer and used it to print stickers to show you guys in the past. So this is not my first video with this printer. I also use it to mass print my minis. So there you go. That is the Strathmore marker paper. I'm going to print the rest of these out and then we're going to switch to another paper, see if that works. Next we're going to take a look at Strathmore. 400 series, nope, 500 series plate Bristol. This is one of my favorite marker papers. It's a little bit more expensive and it's definitely a thirsty paper, which I like because you can do a lot of layers and a lot of blending. So this is an 11 by 17 pad because I am a comic artist and that is the size I normally work in when I'm working inks. So what I want to do is I want to cut this in half, which is going to give us two eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. I think I'm going to do three with these and I haven't yet designed what's going to go on these but I want to maximize my space so I can get as many samples for students in my class as possible per sheet since this does get kind of expensive. So I have to cut these down to get them to fit into my printer so I'm going to line it up on the letter thing and we're just going to do one example because I don't even know if this is going to run through my printer. Okay, this is the design I'm going to use on the Bristol. That way I can get four illustrations uh, per sheet, which seems pretty economical. And hopefully that means everyone can kind of get a chance to play around with the 500 series plate Bristol. Here is my cut down sheet. As you guys can see, 
it will fit in the tray because I cut it down. We're gonna shut it and now we're gonna hit print. This is a test. All right, so we are back over here. We are hitting print. We only have one in there. I do wanna make sure that it is scaled to fit media. I do not want one note. Sometimes Photoshop and my printer have a mind of their own. Let's go to print settings. So let's see. We're going to want to probably select cardstock heavy. Hit OK. And let's try printing. This one might not work. It's already making chewing noises. I can get this to run through my large Canon printer. Um, and I have tutorials for how I print blue lines. It's kind of the same process for printing. Oh, wow, look y'all, it actually worked. I am surprised. Okay, so I'm gonna do a lot of those, unfortunately. I'm so sorry for you, printer. But it did seem to work. Yep, it worked. It's a little bit curled, which is gonna happen with heavier papers with toner printers because it uses heat to set the toner. But otherwise, I'm pretty pleased with it. I'm ready to print some more of them. The next paper I'm gonna test is Canson's Fanboy Illustration Paper. It's nine by 12, so I'm gonna have to cut it down. And it's a 150 pound paper, so it's a little bit heavier than cardstock. I'm gonna leave it on the same settings as it is right now, because this should run. So I'm gonna cut one down and use that as my test. And here is the marker sheet I whipped up for the Canson Fanboy Illustration. All right, here it is cut down, going into the printer. Now I'm just gonna head back over to the computer and hit print. All right, so we're going to print. I just wanna show you the settings I'm gonna use because they're gonna be the same settings as the last time. So we're going to cardstock heavy. You can change what type of paper you're using as well. In fact, they have a heavy down here and extra heavy. A heavy glossy and this is for my specific printer uh, my Dell printer did not have nearly these options so if you're printing along at home I kind of hope you're you're using the same printer I have you also have a print in grayscale option let's click that let's hit OK and then we're gonna hit print and as always this is the moment of truth will it print had a pretty good success rate. And honestly, just because it doesn't print, we may not have the right settings. So we may have to go back and adjust those settings. But I feel like it's a little bit lighter than Bristol or about the same weight. So I'm hoping, I'm think crossing my fingers. And there it comes, oh. And if you don't like it being curled, just put it under a stack of heavy books. Yep, everything looks good, checks out. I'm gonna need to cut these down so that people have individual samples, but I'm pretty satisfied with it. I think I'm gonna do, hmm, four sheets of this one. Okay, we're still on the Canson Fanboy. Uh, this is the second time it's jammed. All I have to really do though is reach in, pull it out, shut the door. And then the last time this happened, it, uh, sorry, reading the message. It, the, ah, see there it went. And then we print, okay. Last time I did that, it printed just fine. So we're gonna double check. But with the Canson Fanboy, that's definitely something you're just gonna wanna kinda keep an eye on. This would not work if you're printing, say, 10 pages at a time. So it's kind of a one at a time kind of deal. Let's see if we can get it to do it correctly this time. I'm really, and I haven't changed the print settings that I showed you guys either. This is probably one of the papers where I should uh, adjust the, the uh, paper weight 
for like 1110 to 300 because it's probably a little bit heavy for this setting. Any of this sort of at home printing is gonna be trial and error and figuring out what works for your printer. And then sometimes there's just gonna be things your printer just can't do. And uh, instead of, you know, see, it jammed again. Let's go change those paper settings. So I canceled that print job because I don't want it printing by mistake and I fixed the jam. So we're gonna go back into print settings. We're going to go into, let's see if I can find it. Heavy, mmm, 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 mmm. This still seems like the best setting. Ugh. There is heavy rough. Maybe we should try that. Sure, why not? Let's try heavy rough. So we're gonna hit okay. We're gonna hit print. We're gonna return to my computer or my printer saying it's still got a jam even though the paper is all out. Come on. I may have to pause this just to fix it because it's a two-handed problem. Okay. Let's see. We changed it to heavy rough, so let's see if that works. And uh, this is the sort of prep I do for any of my hands-on workshops. So I'm gonna be doing the same kind of prep for all of my Copic marker workshops with the Nashville Plaza. I did this sort of prep when I did my watercolor panel at MTAC. I do this sort of prep for my comic classes. I put a lot of time into prepping for classes. I don't mind. I just want you guys to see what kind of value my students get. I really want the best for them. Okay, so we have another jam. This paper, and look, it's like right there. This paper just, let's actually switch it out for the other sheet I cut. That's why we do trial and error. Okay, let's try this. And the paper I have underneath it is just plain copier stock. You want it high enough that your printer can grab the paper. So I have basically a full load in and then I'm putting a single sheet of this heavier stock on top of it. And if it decides not to print, we got two sheets of the Canton Fanboy out of my printer. That's about, mm, about eight. It's enough for hopefully most people to be able to at least play with it. Hmm, here's something. It sounded like it picked it up. Come on, baby. I believe in you. I want to try printing on watercolor paper, too, because I would love to be able to sell watercolor, um, especially if I could do it on cotton rag, which I need to play with. Watercolor coloring sheets of my art so that people can purchase that and then paint along. Oh, we did it. Whoop, whoop. All right, so I'm going to try the last sheet one more time. If it doesn't work, it just doesn't work. And changing the Canton Fanboy illustration paper to Heavy Rough did not seem to have any detrimental print effects. All right, next we're going to try Strathmore Mixed Media Paper with a vellum surface. This is another paper that I really enjoy using for markers, and I want to see if it's going to run through my printer. So this is a 9 by 12 pad, 400 series, so I want to cut these down before we put them in the printer. This is also a heavier paper at 184 pounds, so it may not run through the printer. I'm going to leave it on the rough, heavy setting since this is a vellum texture. It may pick it up a little bit better. And these are the designs that I want to print on the mixed media paper. So I've got the printer loaded. We're going to go to print. And we're just gonna double check these settings heavy rough print on both sides no black only all right looking good we're gonna hit print 
Now to see if the magic happens. And again, this is Strathmore's mixed media paper. So we have several offerings from Strathmore that I'm bringing in today. And that's usually my favorite for use with markers. I like Strathmore papers. I also frequently use alcohol markers in my sketchbooks and you guys can check out some of my videos on how I do that. Most of them are time-lapse and they are heavily reliant on a technique I call overblending. Aha, so it jammed. Let's take a look. And by jam, it didn't even try to run it at all. So we're gonna pop it back in there. I'm gonna hit okay. Give it another chance. I may have to go play with some settings or it may not run this paper at all. It may just be too heavy. Because I don't think it's even able to pick it up. It's trying. It may be too thick. Hmm. Don't think so. Okay. And I lifted it up so that you guys can see, but it didn't even pick it up at all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cancel this job we're gonna head over to the print settings, see if there's anything else we can do. And if not, we may not be able to print on something as heavy as Strathmore uh, mixed media paper. Okay, so let's go to print. Print settings. Let's see. We're on heavy rough. We have rough. Recycled bond, colored, pre punched, pre printed, heavily envelope, envelope, ba 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 ba. You know what? Let's just try unspecified. It doesn't let us put in a weight. Maybe it does. Let's try over here. Paper type, paper quality. Mm -mm -mm. Let's try custom. That's just for paper size. Ye Let's try advanced. Just trying to see if there's anywhere I can put in a paper weight. I've never had a, a printer I've had access to where I can put in a weight individual, like uh, as a custom weight, but I thought it was worth a try since they do offer so many paper types. So we're trying unspecified. Uh, let's see if that works. And already there's a message saying that it has a paper jam. So I think we're just not going to be able to print onto Strathmore mixed media paper, which is a shame because it's one of my favorites for marker and this would just make it so much easier. Okay, so instead we're gonna try Strathmore's Artigan paper. Again, it's nine by 12, we're gonna have to cut it down, but it's much lighter at 60 pounds. And this is their Desert Rose color. So I really like using alcohol markers on like tone tanned or other colored paper. So I thought this could be a fun one for my students to experiment with. And these are the designs I'm going to print onto that paper. Okay, so I've got my test sheet cut down. I'm gonna go pop it in the printer and then we're gonna play with printer settings. I need to adjust them because this is not as heavy as some of the other papers we've been using. Okay, my printer's doing something in the background. I don't know what, but we're gonna go to print. We're gonna go to print settings. We're gonna go to paper type. And then this is 60 pound or 160 GM. So we want to find something kind of in that range. I think it's actually printing, even though I didn't give it permission. So it, I guess it just printed on unspecified. So I'm going to need to set it to heavy. I'm going to cut down another piece of paper and put it in. I thought I canceled that last job, but apparently it did not. But it printed okay, even on unspecified. So let's see how it prints on heavy. 
Okay, it's been loaded, so we're gonna hit okay. We're gonna hit print. Now we're gonna anxiously hover over the printer to make sure it actually does what it's supposed to do. Even though we know the outcome is uns unspecified, it will. Really? I hit there we go. I was like, I hit print. Just think about how many times I've had to run back and forth to the printer because I'm basically printing these pages one at a time because we're working with weird card stocks and we're dealing with a lot of paper jams. So it seems like setting it to heavy makes it print slower so it's probably better able to pick it up and better able to adhere the toner to heavier paper. So we know that it will print on Artigan paper as well. Okay, so we have finished with the Artigan paper. We're now on to Crescent Render Paper. I've reviewed this paper a really long time ago, and I felt like I didn't I didn't really like how dull the colors looked on it, but it is basically a bleed proof paper and they advertise that you can use both sides and that it's for use with all media, but we're going to be using this with alcohol markers. Now this is another nine by 12 pad, so we're going to need to cut this down as well. And it is 110 pounds or 180 GSM. So it's probably cardstock weight. All right, so here is our cut down paper. What's neat about render is that theoretically you could print on both sides. You could marker on both sides because it's not going to bleed through. And then these are the designs that I want to use on this paper. So I'm gonna go ahead and load it up in the printer and we'll see how it prints. All right, so let's see what our printer settings are. It's on cardstock heavy. That sounds about right. Okay. I'm gonna hit print. Just waiting for it to do the thing it gonna do. There it goes. As soon as I go to hit OK, it's like, nope, I got it. We got this. So, so far we've only found one paper that we could not use with the toner printer, especially after you've cut it down. So that's pretty exciting to me. My Canon would be able to run it, but it uses a different type of ink and we're testing for toner printability right now. All right, it looks good. So I'm gonna cut down some other sheets of the Crescent render paper and go ahead and run them through. So I don't know about you guys, but I do enjoy using markers on things like cardstock. So I thought it would be nice to print some uh, line art on just this cream colored cardstock. Now in the past I've used it and haven't had any problems, but I thought I would share it with you guys anyway, since it's just part of this whole process. And this is the design that I'm going to use on the cream colored cardstock. It's Jane Eyre from my many favorite fictional films. And since it's on cardstock, we really shouldn't have to change anything. Let's just make sure it's scaled to fit media. I've already got the printer loaded up. We're gonna do a test single print just to see. There it goes, all right. And you would be able to do this with any kind of colored cardstock. And I usually use colored cardstocks for the covers of my minis, so that's fun. But you can also use any kind of colored cardstock for your marker stuff as well. And starting with a tone base is a lot of fun. I have a video on this channel where I do uh, markers on tone tan paper, but you don't have to just use tone tan. All right, there's our first cardstock printout. Looks pretty good. And I think I'm gonna end for now. I may 
add more on to this video, but I think I'm going to end for now with Strathmore Bristol. This is their 300 series, and this is just smooth Bristol, not plate Bristol, because I want to give my students something. Um, so we have all those little bitty pieces that you guys saw. I cut them all out, um, and they're, they're pretty small. So I wanted to have at least one sort of baseline illustration, which is larger, um, and it's kind of on just a common paper that's used for marker stuff. I can't seem to dig up any of my Copic marker paper, which is a little weird. I don't know where it's run off to. I'm sure I'll find it, which is another reason why I say I may be ending this here, but I may be continuing. So what I need to do is I need to cut this down before we can run it through. And I need to cut it down the same way I would cut down the, or the same way I did cut down the plate bristol. So this is the image that I'm going to use for the Smooth 300 series Strathmore Bristol. Fans and art nerds might recognize her as one of the coloring sheets from my 31 Days Under the Waves zine. So if you like my art and you ever wanted to get a chance to color it, you might want to head on over to my Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup where you get access to this and lots more for no additional charge. So let's go ahead and get this printed up. All right, so we're gonna go to file, we're gonna go to print. We're gonna change this to one because we've only got one sheet in there. I'm gonna go to print settings. I think we're gonna leave it on cardstock heavy. Okay. And we're gonna hit print. I know, it's just riveting television, right? Will it print? But I do think this is probably helpful to a lot of you watching. Uh, my sticker video is surprisingly popular despite being a very, very simple concept. So hopefully you guys will enjoy this one and it'll spark some imagination for you guys as well. I know a lot of, lot of artists sell line art versions of their work for people to color. So if you enjoy coloring, if you enjoy adult coloring books, or if you want to practice your marker techniques on someone else's art, with their permission of course, hopefully this tutorial on printing on various art papers will be useful for you guys. So this is definitely going to have to be flattened under a stack of books, but she appeared to print well. Now to print like 20 of these. Okay, art nerds, we try to run eight papers through my little HP toner printer. Again, your mileage may vary. What your printer is willing to run may differ from what ran through mine. Previously, I owned a little Dell toner printer and it would not run probably any of these papers. So it's something you're gonna wanna experiment. I have a review of my HB printer here on this channel. I'm going to link that in the cards. I'm also going to drop links in the description below to all of these papers as well as to my printer. So we started with Strathmore marker paper. It is a very thin paper. Actually, I'm going to get you guys a better camera angle. Hang on. We started with Strathmore marker paper. It is a very thin slightly translucent marker paper. It's a fairly recent addition to Strathmore's paper line. This is going to be a paper that isn't going to take a lot of your alcohol marker ink. And don't worry, I plan on doing field tests with all of these papers because I am crazy. And I have loads of other marker field tests here on this channel as well. So this ran through with no problem. I think I even had it on the default paper, which is copier paper. Everything else was run at either heavy rough or as cardstock. So we did the Canson Fanboy illustration paper next. This is almost a mixed media paper. It's a heavier paper with a bit of tooth. We did this on, we did it both on um, heavy cardstock and heavy rough. And it printed through both, but there was less jamming on heavy rough. We printed the Strathmore 500 series plate Bristol, which is a smooth, ooh. okay, <laughs> I was like, Oh, I have a bonus paper. No, I just labeled it twice. I'm so organized, you guys. So this is a about a cardstock weight paper with a smooth coating on it. It actually has kaolin clay. Now, if you're inking on this paper, you're going to want to let it dry for 24 hours. I think the toner's fuser, though, probably means that you can start inking or markering this immediately. I really love using plate bristol for marker illustrations. So I do have videos where I use Plate Bristol. 
Then we did, I want to say, Strathmore Artigan paper. I've never actually used Artigan paper. This one is in their Desert Rose color, so it's got a nice rosy mid-tone all over. I'm excited to see how this handles with markers, but I already know I love using Strathmore Tone Tan paper with markers, so I imagine this is going to be very similar. There's also a bit of texture to the paper itself, like not texture on the surface, it's fairly smooth, but rather a grain, like a, a visible grain, kind of like a sand or a granite like appearance. So that should be pretty interesting. Then we ran Crescent Render Paper through. Crescent Render Paper is a double sided paper, which means it should not bleed through and you should be able to mark on either side. I've reviewed Crescent Render Paper in the past and it's not my personal favorite, but it could be great for an alcohol marker sketchbook where you do lots of marker doodles and tests and studies, that sort of thing. This ran through with no problem. Here is regular, just cream colored cardstock. No special plate uh, coatings, no special coverings, just regular cardstock, no glossy finish. And um, it ran through fine, of course, because it is designed for going through printers. I like using cardstocks with markers. In fact, I usually use white cardstock with my two tone marker commissions. It holds on to the ink a little bit longer. I really like doing a lot of blending. And then finally, we printed a bunch of large pieces on Strathmore 300 series Bristol, and this was also set to the cardstock setting. So if you're printing papers that are cardstock weight, you should have no problem if you have the same HB printer that I have. Um, I do plan on testing this out with watercolor papers, but I think I'm going to do that in a follow-up video just because I think this has gone on long enough. So I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, watching this today. I hope it was useful, helpful, informative, and inspiring, especially for those of you who are into doing coloring for relaxation or you want to improve your coloring or maybe you're a card maker. This is definitely information that should be useful for you, and I hope it is. If you found this video useful, please do share it. Share it on your favorite form share it on Facebook, share it with your friends, help other people find this information because you're helping me a lot when you share this information. And if you love to color and you want access to my coloring sheets, you can join my Patreon over at patreon.com slash natosoup. By joining the art nerd community, you're going to get access to my favorite fictional femmes, which is 31 women and girls from my favorite fictional pieces. So I have these available as coloring sheets. You're going to gain access to my 31 Days Under the Waves coloring sheets. You're going to gain access to loads of standalone coloring sheets that I haven't even shown in this video. And I'm always updating my backer goodies. I do a once a month um, backer coupon list and I'm just constantly adding new things to it. So if you like what I do, you want to help support me and you want access to cool stuff, head on over to patreon.com slash natosuit. So I am going to be doing some marker tests in the near future. I hope you guys will keep an eye out for it. And I hope to see you guys again really soon. Have a wonderful day, guys. Bye!